Uh, I want to ask you a follow-up question on the latter point that you raised. One about how we need to break out of the burden of partition and our unresolved borders with China. Isn't that the achievement of the last eight years, or at least that's what security analysts say? One, that we have dehyphenated ourselves from Pakistan. The fact that we are hosting a conference on no money for terror, where everyone agrees that in our neighborhood we have somebody who is financing terror, who is into terror financing. Second, that we manage to have our message of you know, being equidistant from Russia and Ukraine and still managing to enjoy good relations with, with both. And we managed to have that in the resolution of G20. Isn't that example enough of how we've managed to create a niche for ourselves vis-a-vis -vis not just China and Pakistan, but the world in general? Well, uh, with great respect, dehyphenation does not mean being able to break out of the region. And the reason why I say that, if you look around the world, South Asia is the most unintegrated region in the world. In fact, if India has to truly uh, achieve its potential, it can't happen till the time South Asia becomes a cohesive, unified economic entity or a trade arrangement at least to, bring, uh, to begin with. And the biggest gridlock in that is the equation or the lack of an equation uh, between India and Pakistan. So therefore, the fact is that you are living in a neighborhood whereby you have two neighbors who, have, uh, or who are also nuclear weapon states. And therefore, under those circumstances, if India has to surmount its developmental challenges of education, illiteracy, you know, other human development parameters, you need peace on your periphery. You need peace on your periphery at least for the next three decades. And that's what China willed way back in 1979. And that's why it has a five is to one power differential with India today. So therefore, till the time you do not find that modus vivendi, whereby you are able to uh, lessen your focus on your national security imperatives and start looking at some of the other things which are equally or if not more germane, I'm afraid it is not going to happen. And, and, and so therefore, unfortunately, we are caught in a rhetoric of the past. The fact is that the world has kind of moved on. And you talked about Russia and Ukraine. I was in Europe recently, last week, and we had long meetings uh, with members of the European Commission, the European External Service, the U European members of parliament, as well as members of, uh, as well as uh, the, the bureaucracy of some of these other countries. And I can tell you that uh, a lot of the world is not very happy with India's equidistance. Why? And, uh, well, primarily for the reason that uh, India, going back to 1947, mm. has always had this moral imperative to its uh, foreign policy. Yes, realists may try and dismiss it, that real politics does not really entail having moral imperatives. But that is what was India's USP. And to a certain extent, uh, the position that we have taken, and I can understand the imperatives of the government for taking that position, but I do believe, and I had said this when I had led the debate on Ukraine in Parliament, that we could have been far, far more nuanced and far, far more fine with the way uh, that we actually uh, presented our position. 